introduction to conservation of energy. James Joule, a British scientist, did an experiment to show that work done by an object moving downward could be converted to thermal energy. And this led to the law of conservation of energy, which tells us that in any transfer or transformation of energy in a closed system, the total energy before that transfer is equal to the total energy after. This is the diagram to show what the experiment looked like. So James Joule had some masses moving downward, which then did work to move some paddles inside a container of water, which was an insulated container. And he showed that the work done as the masses moved downward was equal to the increase in thermal energy of the water. So energy was conserved in his experiment, and in fact energy is always conserved. But what that means is that energy can never be created, nor can it be destroyed. Instead, it just changes from one type to another. So what do we mean by total mechanical energy? Well, total mechanical energy is equal to the total of all the different types of mechanical energy that we've learned about. So far, we've learned about these three types, gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, and elastic potential energy. We can write that this way, which is shorter, a formula that shows us the total of all the mechanical energy before the transformation and the total after. So here we see the total before. Here we see the total after. You'll see we have gravitational potential energy, kinetic, and elastic potential energy. Let's try an example. Selma's riding her favorite roller coaster, the Flyer. The famous CNE roller coaster, which is now gone, sadly. And we'll say that it has a frictionless track, which makes it more fun. We want to determine the speed of the cars at point A if they start from rest, and the speed of the cars at point B. So here's what the coaster looks like. We can see the cars at the start, and we can see point A and point B like so. And we've got some heights measured here which we'll use in our calculations. So in part A we've got the total energy before equals the total energy after but we don't have any elastic potential energy, so these values are zero. Our gravitational potential energy can be found with our formula for gravitational potential energy right there, m times small g times h. At the start, the cars aren't moving, so the kinetic energy is equal to zero. When the cars reach point A, if we use that as our reference point, which means that the height is zero, and the gravitational potential energy at point A must be zero. Kinetic energy at point A can be found using our formula for kinetic energy, mass times speed squared over two. Notice that we've written primes. These tick marks are called primes, and that means after. So that's our gravitational potential energy after, VG prime. Same with the kinetic energy after, elastic potential energy after. So V prime is the speed after, which in this case is at point A. Notice here that I've divided everything by m. So the m goes away. So in other words, the mass of the cars really didn't matter in this problem. Here's our g, small g. Here's the height above point A at the start point for the cars. And now we've got v prime squared over 2, and we rearrange that to get v prime by itself. And I get 22.1 meters per second. You can check that with your adding machine if you want. In part B, it's a similar solution, except that at location B, at point B, compared to point A, it's t point B is, uh, or rather compared to the start position for the cars, um, at point B, the cars are 20 meters lower. So here I've measured the height 
at the beginning. So this is the height at the start, but it's now relative to point B. So in other words, I've changed the reference point to point B. So at the start, the cars are 20 meters above point B. Again, I've divided by mass on both sides. And I rearrange, and I get V prime by itself, and I get it to be 19.8 meters per second. So after point B, what happens if there's some friction and the cars are going to stop? Let's have a look at that. So if the friction force is 75 newtons backwards, acting on the cars from point B onwards, how far will the cars go before stopping? And we're going to use energy methods to solve this part. We could use the five equations of motion and Newton's laws, but we won't. We'll use energy. And the total mass of the cars is given here at 740 kilograms. So we've seen this before. This is really the work energy theorem, but um, even though I didn't tell you this before, this is actually another way to write conservation of energy. So the work that's done is equal to the change in energy. In this case, it's a change in kinetic energy. We can find work with force times displacement, or change in kinetic energy. At the end, kinetic energy is zero because the cars have stopped, so that's where the zero comes from. Here we've got the kinetic energy at point B. So we'll do put our force in here, and we'll substitute our mass and the speed of the car at B. And then we'll rearrange to get delta B by itself. And I get 97.7 meters. And so the cars will roll to a stop after traveling 97.7 meters beyond point B. And that's an introduction to conservation of energy.